Days went by, and it was finally time for the military results to be released. Landon had decided that there would be no classes today for those who took the exams previously. At 9 a.m., the test papers, evaluation papers for each physical test, as well as a midterm report card for each individual, would be tied together with rubber bands and handed to the recruits. The recruits were to go to the training field and wait for their papers there. Today, Mustafa, Michael, and their friends were lost in thought as they did their early morning training routine. Ever since Michael won Mustafa during the physical combat exam, they had become close. Since Michael's dormitory room was just two dorms away from Mustafa, they were just in each other's dormitories before lights out. At 8.40 a.m., they had already hurriedly eaten their breakfast and were currently making their way back to the training fields. Once they got there, they saw several other students waiting anxiously as well. Someone waved at them from the front of the field, and they made their way towards the person. Good thing you guys came now rather than later. Or else even if I had called you guys by over, there would have been no space for you all to pass through to the front, Solomon said. Solomon was also one of their many new friends. Everyone around them started speaking to them as they waited. I'm so nervous. I can't wait for the results. What if I fail this midterm? When I remember the exam, I feel like crying. There were some questions that I truly didn't feel confident about. Bro, you're not the only one. I lost a match in the combat examination, Mustafa said. Me too. Ah. Uh, for me, it was the gun shooting examination. I couldn't run and shoot properly. So at 9 a.m., we'll receive all the papers for the exams? Yes. All the written papers, as well as different papers on the physical examinations. I think it'll also let us to know how we were graded in each physical exam. Yeah. I want to know how they gave us our scores so I can prepare for the next exam as well. Didn't you remember that His Highness said that no two exams would be the same? Look. Look. The warrant officers have arrived. There were at least four warrant officers handing out exam papers for each letter of the alphabet. Mustafa stood around the warrant officers that were handing out papers to those whose names started with M. Mustafa Cannon. Present. He quickly dashed through the crowd and took his papers from the officer. All his exam papers were already arranged and joined together with four rubber bands. As he was too nervous to take a look, he decided to wait for Solomon and Michael to get their papers first. The first paper on the stack in his hand just had their names and military matriculation numbers written boldly with pen, hence he hadn't been able to guess what scores they had gotten so far. The first paper was more like a cover page for the other exam papers. For Mustafa, the cover page just had Military Midterm Examination Results Mustafa Cannon Matriculation Number 00000514 Authorized by His Majesty Landon Barn and General of the Army Lucius Fullbuster Landon's and Lucius signatures. August 17th, year 1024. Speaking of dates, ever since Landon had come to this world, a lot of things shocked him. Especially the fact that these people somehow called months, the same way he did back on Earth. Right now, calendars already existed. But they were just not put down on paper. Every city, town, or village had a group of people that were in charge of dates. There were buildings that were built just for date recording. Stone buildings, stone tablets, or stones were generally preferred. For example, in Baymard, every morning, someone would come up to the abandoned stone building at the entrance of the upper region and use a sharp stone to place a straight stroke under the month name on the building wall. The first floor of the entire building had already been completely marked as they had been using this building throughout the years. It was kind of cool. It looked like those ancient Egyptian markings in the pyramids. In places without stone buildings, large stone rocks would be cleaned and smoothed out to form stone tablets. The people would then place several strokes on the tablets as the days went by. These stone tablets were always placed in a safe public area, where all could see. Back on Earth, Europeans came up with the calendars in the 10th century as well. But the Egyptians were different. The Egyptians had already come up with calendars ages before the Europeans. The Egyptians were just too advanced for the world. In fact, they had left the Europeans in the dust. In fact, Egyptians and Asians were also advanced as well, especially the Chinese. They were one of the first people to use sundials, to tell the time and so on. Like Earth, Hertfilia had different continents that probably had different cultures as well. Who knows if there was already another continent right now that had already advanced in development like the Egyptians or the Chinese. Although he had compared Hertfilia with Earth here and there, Hertfilia had some areas that were more advanced when compared to Earth in the 10th century. Some things were similar to Earth, but not all things. 
This was a brand new world with its own practices and its own traditions. For some reason, their shipmaking game was on point. It was more sturdier than that of Earth in the 10th century. Once Mustafa and his friends had collected their papers, they sat on the grass and looked at their results. The warrant officers had said that the only thing that they were allowed to keep was their report card paper. When they were done checking their papers, they were to return them back. No one was allowed to take the other papers away. Okay, guys, let's open them together. One, two, three-inch Solomon said. They immediately took off the rubber bands and removed the cover pages. The first sheet after the cover page was a report card that showed them all their results. Ah, I passed. Me too. Habahami three. They continued looking through all the other papers so as to understand how they were graded. Mustafa looked at his physical combat score and was shocked. He opened his eyeballs widely and even thought that his mind was playing tricks on him. Hey, I passed the combat exam. Michael and Solomon were shocked. What you did you say? Quickly, let's look at how our combat papers were graded. I see. I scored higher for perseverance, bravery, and combat knowledge. He. But of course, I had a two-tenths for task completion. So they checked several things when accessing us? It looks like it. Oh. They even told me how to correct my stand for the backward kick move. So they also give advice on these evaluation papers? Haha. Uh -huh. I don't care. I'm so happy right now. Let's go buy food at the market square. I second that. They quickly binded all their papers back with the rubber bands, excluding their report card paper, and handed them back to the warrant officers. Celebration time. Today was the 19th of August, and only 12 days were left before the month ended. Right now, there were currently 5,200 men who were assigned to construct these sites, 1,000 men who were building the greenhouse, and 6,000 workers who were doing road construction in the District E. So far, only the water and sewage plant, as well as the power plant, have been completed. While the central heating heating plant was only 98% done, as the workers were still installing essential fixtures like sinks to all buildings on the site. Since the first two plants were done, Landon decided to start teaching the men how to operate both plants, as well as assign some workers to start placing underground electrical wires from the power plant to District E. For the 5,200 men who were previously assigned at the construction sites, Landon divided them up like so. 1,000 workers to complete construction on the central heating plant. 700 workers to operate the water and sewage plant. 500 workers to operate the power plant. And 3,000 workers to place electrical cables alongside the roads. These new industries basically needed chemical engineers, alchemists, electrical engineers, and so on. Hence, Landon requested that some of the electrical engineers in training should be placed in each site, as well as some of the alchemists who would be trained to chemical engineers. On the other hand, the mechanical and civil engineers would definitely come from the construction workers whom he had assigned to the plants. Chief Tim and Chief Wiggins were also to appoint supervisors for every sector within these plants. For example, in the water and sewage plant, after the water leaves the sea and travels through the pipes, it would go to a 300-square-foot building. This building has different equipments used for filtering out any sand particles or hard rocks from the water, as well fishes that made their way to the building. In that stage of water processing, Landon wanted two supervisors in charge of all mechanical and chemical processes involved within the building. They were to supervise all activities taking place in that building before the water leaves and goes to the next processing stage. Although Landon needed guards and cooks within these plants, he didn't want to assign any just yet, at least until September. For now, the men would still have their food brought into Sector 1 by trucks. Landed decided that for these first four days, he would alternate between both plants. Today, he would only be teaching the workers in the power plant how to operate the plant. And the next day, he would do the same for those assigned to the water and sewage treatment plant. Landon decided to use this four days to give them an intense theoretical lecture on both plants. And for the remaining eight days, all the workers from both plants would officially start their training. Within this eight-day period, Landon had decided that he would spend his mornings in the power plant. And for the afternoons, he would spend it within the water and sewage treatment plant. Early in the morning, the selected workers jumped into the trucks and headed out to their new work sites. The debut release occurred at N. OV3L equals B, J, N. Today was their first theory class in the plant. Once the workers who had never been to the construction site before stepped onto the first sector, they were utterly shocked. They felt like they had just stepped into another world. At the front of the sector was a large cemented block that had different words carved on it. 
The words read, Baymard Power Plant. The block was standing on another platform that was surrounded by a massive pond. And around the pond was a small field of grass. Basically, the large words were on a fountain. The beautiful, smooth and black roads made the fountain look like a roundabout with several roads going towards different locations within the first sector. In this sector, there weren't many buildings since most plan activity happens in the second sector. This sector would mostly be used for the business side of the plant, as well as house the plant clinic, security offices, and so on. The buildings here were fully cemented and went as high as four or five stories. With the exception of two large ones that were both three stories high and covered with only bluish glass walls. These two glass wall buildings were connected together on their second floors by what looked like a glass bridge. As the trucks drove by, the workers looked around excitedly like tourists. Wow, look at that building. Oh my heavens, buildings can be built like this. Look at that large glass door at its entrance. The workers weren't the only ones stunned silly. Chief Wiggins was really having a hard time believing what he saw. Once again, the way he looked at Landon had completely changed. In his mind, Landon's title had now been changed from messenger of God to God of knowledge. Although Chief Tim had seen the plant during construction, he couldn't help but be amazed when looking at the end result. As both overseers looked around, they couldn't help but wonder when their own estates would be renovated. The workers really wanted to have a tour of the first sector. But sadly, Landon had the drivers drive straight to the next sector. Landon had promised them that once all three sites were up and running, he would give them a grand official tour. For now, all these buildings were locked, and their keys were placed on Landon's desks, as well as Chief Tim's desk. The only buildings that were open right now were those in Sector 2. These few days left, as well as the entire month of September, was their training period. Hence only by completing their training would they truly belong to the plant. Plus, by the end of September, they would all get their badges and work identity cards for access within the plants. Once the men arrived at the second sector, Landon began his lecture. Seven days had gone by, and both plants now shared electricity and water between them. At this point, the central heating plant was completed. Hence, Landon kept 500 workers to operate the plant and sent the other 500 to aid in installing underground cables along the roads. And just like that, the last day of August had arrived. As for the workers, they now felt a little more confident in their plan operation skills and knowledge. Granted, they made a lot of errors on their first few days, but Landon had expected as much. Hence, he wasn't worried about their learning pace. After all, they still had the whole September to learn brush up their skills. When it concerned learning, no matter how many years one spent in school, nothing could compare to actually doing the procedures. One could spend four years studying chemical engineering, but that didn't mean that if that same person went to an oil plant, that person would automatically know what to do. Knowledge without practice was useless on the field. Back on Earth, there were people who had never gone to school before, but they could fix any machine, car, or engine just because they had been taught on the job. And even those who had spent 10 years working on oil plants didn't know everything about their jobs. While on the job, new problems would definitely arise daily, making every day different from the next. It was impossible to know everything at once. In schools, People would sometimes cram a lot of information, just so that they could graduate. That was why practice was important, as well as schooling. Both went hand in hand. So he had first spent his time teaching them the theory, before showing them how the plant actually operated. Right now, Landon didn't need them to know everything. He just needed them to learn at their own pace, and safely operate the plant. The more they did, the more they would remember. I mean, he couldn't possibly put them through four years of schooling, before finally allowing them to work on the plants, could he? The only way was to learn on the job. As for the workers, they truly liked their new work environment, especially because they could use the toilet, soap, and tissue paper. And don't get them started on the magical light tubes that shines brightly at night when they pulled the tiny switch upwards. These plant sites were like heaven to them. Right now, they all had one question in mind. When was their king going to start residential construction? September was here and once again, Santa had sent his subordinates to Baymart as usual. Landon bought several seeds and animals, as well as sold his oars to Santa's subordinates. After he had sorted out the children, new military recruits, caretakers, and the elderly, Landon was left with 5,970 new workers, 100 hospital recruits, and 23 people who had professions prior to being slaves or refugees. Amongst those 23 people were seven teachers, 10 healers, nurses, and six new doctors. 
Of course, Landon immediately assigned the doctors to start training under Dr. Gerson. As for the nurses, they were to join the new 100 hospital recruits and start training under nurses Chanel and Laura. Last month, Landon had added 100 trainees in the hospital. And this month, he had also added another 100 as well. The hospitals ran for 24 hours every day of the week, so more people were needed for different shifts. As for the teachers, Landon would use this September to train them. Although this was the last semester before the long holiday, Landon hoped that by October, these new teachers would begin teaching. It would be wise for them to use the remaining half of the semester as part of their training. Hence, Landon decided to let them teach courses like Pino 1 and Math 1. This month, there were a lot of things that Baymard needed. Firstly, Landon wanted to start making printing presses. He chose to make lithography steam engine rotatory printing presses. These steam engine printing presses were deemed the fastest that could work without electricity throughout ancient times. These ones could print both sides of a page in a single operation at an incredible speed as well. One steam press alone could print over 200 book pages a day, provided water was constantly fed to the engine, as well as a constant supply of ink. Since he couldn't make digital printers right now, rotary printing presses would have to do. Once the printing press could run, I dot D cards, government documents and calendars were a must. Up next, Landon wanted to focus on mattress making. He wanted to make two types of mattresses, polyurethane foam mattresses and memory foam mattresses. Memory foam mattresses were actually made from the polyurethane ones. The only difference between the two were the additives used for making memory foam. Both foams could be made to feel hard, flexible, or even super soft, depending on whether they would be used in mattresses, pillows, wheelchair seats, bench and couch cushions, car seats, dishwashing sponges, gym mats, and so on. Polyurethane foam is generally formed when a polyol and an isocyanate are combined. Once combined, the foam starts forming and rising on its own at standard atmosphere pressure. The foam starts rising like how yeast would rise in dough and quickly solidifies itself, hence making the soft, flexible, and comfortable material used for mattresses and other cushions. For memory foam, both chemicals used for polyurethane foam are added, along with water and a variety of catalysts and additives. Also, depending on the different chemicals used, these foams could have different colors as well, like the yellow foam used for dishwashing sponges or the white foam used for mattresses. Finally, Landon wanted to focus on textile making. He knew that during this period, he would focus on all textile materials, except cotton. Since June, Landon had been buying cotton seeds from Santa's subordinates. Generally, cotton grew as a shrub, with the plant taking five to six months to fully grow and produce cotton. Since he couldn't wait for that long, he decided to focus on wool, yarn, and all other textile materials. For the past two months, the workers had been cutting and storing the fur from the animals which he had been purchasing. And now, it was finally time to create thread used in making different clothing items such as blankets, winter jackets, winter hats, socks, curtains, and so on. Hence, with everything needed this September, Landon divided the 5,970 new workers like so. Alchemy Industry Foam Department, 570. The other existing departments, 500. Food Industry, 500. Textile Industry, 500. Construction Industry. Printing Press, 400. Other existing departments, 600. Actual Construction Workers, 2,900. Since there were no available buildings within the construction industry, Landon decided to have the Paper Making Department share their four-story building with the Printing Press. As for the textile industry, since the animals and their fur were being stored within the food industry, Landon thought that it would be wise to allow them to occupy for buildings within the food industry as well, at least until their own facility was built. Hence, he had also decided that since those 1,000 workers assigned to build the greenhouse were done, they might as well start constructing the textile industry now. For this new textile industry, Landon just wanted eight buildings within it. And while construction is underway, those assigned towards textile making would do their jobs within the food industry. In this era, the people already knew how to spin and form textile thread for clothing. The difference was that all their clothing was handmade. So for this first week of September, Landon wanted those assigned to the textile industry to start making thread from all animal fur previously collected and stored. And while they were focusing on that, Department C6 of the construction industry was to make mechanical wheeler sewing machines and spinning wheels. Instead of using electricity, these machines used several pulley mechanisms and leg paddles to spin the threads and sew fabrics. 
With these machines, the workers would be more efficient when compared to hand sewing and stitching. And once the first week of September was over, Landon would then divide the workers into two groups. One group would focus on making thread, while the other would be focused on fabric making. For this textile industry, Landon decided to appoint Mrs. Sophia as overseer of the industry. Sophia was the wife of Chief Lior, and since both industries were basically sharing the same state, Landon decided to appoint her as overseer. Plus, she was the one who had previously aided Landon in sewing badges for the military recruits. So from now on, she would be known throughout Baymard as Chief or Overseer Sophia. And for the food industry, since the greenhouse was already constructed, Landon wanted the new workers to start planting and transferring several medical herbs from the farms to the greenhouse. With the addition of 2,900 construction workers, Landon now had 12,900 workers altogether. It was finally time to focus on building residential homes for the citizens. Landon divided the group up like so. 2,000 were to focus on installing electric cables alongside the roads. For 1,000 were to focus on tarring the roads, as well as installing all sewage, water, rainwater drainage, and central heating pipes underneath the ground. 900 would also focus on using heavy machines to level the space for the residential buildings. And finally, 7,000 workers would focus on constructing homes for the citizens. Back on Earth, the only reason building homes took over six months was because of land surveying, getting land permits, getting architects to make blueprints, hiring contractors, lawyers, and so on. The actual construction process doesn't take that long at all, depending on the desired house size. Typically, three men could build a 2,900-square-foot house within 11 weeks, three months, and two weeks. That's without working on Saturdays and Sundays. In Landon's case, he wanted to build a 2,400-square-foot home using 27 men in each group. This would by far slim down the building time, and in about one and a half weeks, 27 men would finish one residential building. And since there were 7,000 workers assigned to building the homes, there would be 259 groups made up of 27 workers. Hence, after one and a half weeks, Landon expected to see at least 259 homes already constructed. Landon wanted them to do what they had previously done when they constructed all three industries at once. Once the workers had to wait for cement to harden during the foundation, floor, and wall stages, Landon expected them to start construction for other residential homes. So in that way, by the end of the one and a half week time frame, each team would actually complete, or at least start two or more homes at once. Of course, Landon had made up his mind to also assist all these industries within this month, especially the textile industry. Once the day came to an end, Landon looked at his schedule for September and truly felt like crying. He was busy as hell. He had to supervise another military exam for the recruits that came during the month of June. It had been three months for those recruits, and now was the period for their first official exam, hence his presence as king was a must. Apart from aiding the industries and making his presence known in the military, Landon also had to visit the hospitals, nurseries, as well as the school. As he lay on his bed, Landon quickly tried his best to fall asleep fast, for he knew that tomorrow would be a long, weary day. Previously, during the month of August, Landon had allocated a large estate within the upper region to the medical volunteers. He decided to let the estate be a medical and healthcare academy. Medical care emphasized on disease treatment and care while health care looked at signs, prevention of diseases, and health promotion and awareness. Generally, medical and health care had more than hundreds of different professions within it. From pharmacists to medical assistants, emergency medical technicians, cardiac surgeons, nutritionists, radiation therapists, and so on. In future, these students would have to specialize in particular areas and perform several operations and jobs within the hospital and clinics. For now, Landon had given them schedules which they had to follow strictly. They also had to attend the math, chemistry, and pino classes being taught within Baymart. Chemistry was basically a main course for them. Understanding matter, chemical reactions that occur within the body, and chemical compositions within medical drugs was a necessity. Right now, 100 volunteers had also joined the academy within this month, making a total of 200 students. For their schedules, aside from math, pino, and chemistry, the students also took first aid classes, wound care and treatment classes, medical rules and ethics classes, medical massage therapy classes, patient care, management and recording classes, patient communication classes, disease management and treatment classes, and finally, hospital time, 
where different groups of students would spend 3.5 hours in the hospital aiding the nurses and doctors. With the schedule that Landon had made, on a daily basis the hospital had students who came over and took care of the patients. Under the supervision of the nurses and doctors, the students also did hospital rounds, comforted the patients, and did other medical tasks. In this way, they were learning and practicing at the same time. Today, Nurse Chanel had two groups to supervise during her eight-hour shift. The first group of 15 students would come for three and a half hours, while the other group would come after her lunch break. Once all the students from the first group had arrived at the front of the hospital, she began her roll call. Kenneth Carby, present. Quebo Jones, present. As she called out their names, she used a blue pin to tick their names on the list that she was holding. Once roll call was done, she led them to the locker room that had spare lab coats, gloves, rubber shoes, hair caps, face masks, and so on. The students quickly wore the lab coats and shoes provided, as well as put their gloves and face masks in their lab coat pockets. Once everyone was done, they followed Nurse Chanel to her office for a 30-minute meeting. It was now 8.30 a.m., and Chanel's shift started at 9 a.m. The students were told to always come at least 35 minutes earlier. Two days ago, your group came to the hospital and worked under me. We have been working together since the start of August. So you all know the drill. The seated students immediately took out their notebooks and pens as they waited for her questions. Patient Juliana in Ward B, too, says that her tummy is constantly upset. Her stomach feels like it's full of water, bloated, she vomits a lot, and her tummy aches as well. She also says that she always feels like going to relieve herself, she has a fever, and she passes out a lot of gas frequently. She also has trouble swallowing, always feels nauseous, and her stool is loose and watery. Causes. Go. The students raise their hands and attempt to give their hypotheses. It could be due to indigestion. She might have been used to eating food without drinking water. After all from the lectures, indigestion is known to cause bloating, gas release, and deep aches and pains around the belly. Hmm, your answer could have been correct. But how do you explain the other symptoms? It could have also been diarrhea. All the symptoms match it well? Nurse Chanel smiled. Correct. The patient is indeed suffering from diarrhea. So what causes diarrhea? Allergies. Lactose intolerance. Food poisoning. All the possibilities listed down were in fact correct. But for this case, food poisoning was the main cause of the issue. In this era, people didn't have fridges and better ways to store food. Hence, they didn't know the meaning of expiration dates. For them, food was edible unless it was visibly rotten. These people would cook food and leave it outside for days while eating it. In fact, a lot of them died from food poisoning and had tummy aches frequently. For these people, it was normal to eat and have tummy aches, provided fever and sickness didn't take their lives. Even when their meat, bread, and other food items were molded, they would scrape away the molded parts and continue eating the foods. At least with the existence of plastic bags and containers in Baymart, the people could successfully cover their food from flies. But that still didn't change the fact that all food items would expire. Landon had taken his time to write books on basic hygiene and the causes, symptoms, and treatments of common problems that almost everyone back on Earth knew. He wrote about lactose intolerance, malaria, fever, the common flu or cold, rash treatments, sore throat pain, the importance of washing hands, and so on. Although he hadn't received the medical reward from the system, he wrote about these everyday illnesses based on what he knew. Landon was sure that everyone on Earth had gotten sore throat, fever, flu, headaches, tummy aches, and all the other, easy, illnesses at some point of their lives. Good. So since her diarrhea was caused by food poisoning, how do we solve it? Have her go on a clear liquid diet for one day, so that her upset stomach can settle down. Have her hydrate by drinking a lot of water regularly. Letting her avoid milk and spicy foods. Having her drink a mixture of boiled ginger and water. This could reduce inflammation along the throat, as well as strengthen her stomach. Plus, ginger would also act as a good antibiotic for her fever, nausea, and headache. We could also add feather you, milk vetch root, and white peony root to the ginger water mixture. Nurse Chanel and the students discussed amongst themselves and came up with the perfect treatment for patient Juliana, as well as several other patients in the other wards. They had used five minutes to talk about each patient on Chanel's patient checklist. And after 30 minutes, it was time finally for her shift to begin. Chanel gave each person in the team specific duties for the day. 
Some were in charge of preparing and boiling all the medicines for all the patients on the roster, as per Chanel's instructions. Others were in charge of communicating with the patients about their illnesses, medication, and prevention of their sicknesses. Some also did therapy massages, wound treatments, and, and so on. Of course, before any medication was administered, Chanel was present to supervise the students. She was also the one that wrote in the patient's medical book as well. Each time the group came over to the hospital, their duties would change. This was done so that they would gain experience and understanding towards all medical procedures within the hospital. And just like that, by the end of the group shift, Chanel had a 10-minute meeting with them on what they did right today, as well as their individual mistakes. As the group made their way out of the hospital, they kept discussing the events of the day amongst themselves excitedly. They loved the comments that they had gotten from the patients, as well as those from their supervisor nurse Chanel. Treating people's illnesses also made them have a sense of accomplishment. In their opinion, volunteering and choosing to be medical-slash-healthcare students was the best decision that they had made throughout their entire lives. They had everything. Money, food, housing, and job satisfaction. What more could they want? They were proud to be seen as future doctors and nurses of Baymart. Today, Landon had a meeting with the three government officials that previously came from the Empire of Yodin and May. Every week, Landon and the three men would write and revise all acts, policies, and regulations in Baymart. They had been writing these laws since May and had only successfully finished writing them around mid-August. Back on Earth, all countries had more than hundreds of written policies for the citizens to follow. Landon and the three government officials, Nicholas, Craig, and Benazer, sat around a table and went through the several piles of papers. All the documents were categorized alphabetically from A to Z and were also arranged according to their sectors. There were sectors like agriculture, beverages, fishery, citizenship and immigration, transportation, food preservation, schools, labor rights, minimum wages, construction, and environmental, as well as other sectors like natural resources, medical, engineering, law, military, parks, foreign affairs, trade, water bodies like ocean and streams, Baymar treasury, justice, tax, energy resources, public safety, and so on. In general, there were over 50 different sectors which had their own individual acts, policies, and regulations. It was impossible to write all these policies over a short period of time, hence Landon didn't want to address any government issues until they were done. Take, for example, the sector called agriculture. This sector had rules, policies, acts, and regulations for everything agriculture. Within the sector, every grain, fruit, herb, dairy, meat, livestock, spices, seasonings, vegetables, processed goods like butter, and so on, had their own policies. These policies focused on marketing, health hazards and standards, the selling price range for all goods, imports, exports, offenses and punishments for not following the law, and the list went on. For example, there were documents written on all laws involving apples. So each food item like tomatoes had their own separate documents and policies. That was how it was done on Earth, and that was how Landon wanted to do it here. Each fruit or food had their individual expiration dates, so it was only right to write their policies separately. There were also label requirements and regulations that had to be followed strictly for each food item. Landon had written documents on how long each food item could last, with and without chemical preservatives added to them. Anything that went to the market had to have an expiration date on it that showed when it was produced and when it would expire. He wanted the citizens to start getting health conscious as well. Right from July, the food industry had been adding chemical preservatives to most of the foods that they had produced. This drastically decreased the rate at which the foods turned bad, which was also a good thing. But still, without the aid of fridges or freezers, these food items still rotted away fast as compared to if they were refrigerated. For now, the expiration labels would only show the expiration dates for all foods if they were not refrigerated. But once fridges came out, Landon would also revise the expiratory dates as well. Food labels also had to show what chemical preservative was added into the food, as well as safety hazards and signs like if it should be kept away from the eyes and so on. Also under this agriculture sector, there were policies on farm income protection, department mediation policies, insurance acts, and agricultural loans for people who wanted to start their own farming businesses. It also spoke about farming practices for land preservation and water. In fact, there were a ton of things that had been written under each sector alone. Even looking at the environmental sector, Landon had written policies on littering, deforestation, pollution, 
recycling, and waste management. He had quickly realized that he needed a waste and garbage management industry that would recycle containers and destroy all the garbage around Baymart. This industry would also be in charge of collecting all garbage from the garbage around Baymart. Generally, each sector would have a board, parliament, or council that discussed all topics and problems involved within that particular sector, like having a Supreme Court, Engineering, Research and Natural Science Council, Medical Board, Citizenship and Immigration Board, Labor Rights Board, Public Safety Board, Sports Board, Statistics Board, and so on. For example, the Statistics Board would basically collect, compile, analyze, and publish all statistics information related to commercial, industrial, financial, social, and economical activities in Baymart. They were also in charge of taking population consensus of the citizens, as well as doing several other government jobs. Also, Landon wanted to make a Health and Safety Inspection Board, which would be in charge of inspecting all industries and goods in Baymart. They would go to the industries and ensure that the goods that are marketed out to the citizens are not poisonous, expired, or harmful to consumers. They had to ensure that all industries had safety equipments and needs like ladders, as well as check restaurant cleanliness and so on. In future, Landon would also have them check all the drugs that were being kept in the hospitals and clinics. After all, they would be the main inspection team in Baymart. Landon and the men then proceeded to talk about the sector called benefits, which tackled public pensions, employment insurance benefits like maternity leaves, family benefits, education planning and student aid, disability benefits, housing benefits, payment plans, and so on. Overall, all three government officials were happy with the benefit sector. It showed them that when they themselves retired, they would not need to worry about food and other basic necessities. The important thing was that they wouldn't be seen as a burden to their children or grandchildren. They truly felt grateful to Landon for thinking about them in their old age. Back in Yoden, they had been working as government officials for several years now. And this was the first time that they had seen this type of policy. There was no other place within the Pino continent that gave such benefits. All of them came to Baymard with their families. So as they read through the policies, they began to put themselves in the shoes of those in need. If the ones in need were their own children or family members, wouldn't that be great? No one could predict the future. So having plans that tackled health and finance would be seen as heavenly to a lot of citizens, slaves, and refugees. Their king had taken everyone into account, even disabled people, as well as orphans and basically anyone who couldn't help themselves. They felt proud and blessed to be working under him.